In this video, you're gonna learn about five common mistakes that people make when they're using CapCut. As usual, I don't like beating around the bush. Let's just jump right into it. Mistake number one is saving videos with that CapCut watermark. Let's be honest, nobody wants to see a watermark on the videos that they're watching. It may not seem like a big deal, but a watermark truly takes away from the overall greatness of a possible video. And when it comes to CapCut, a lot of the times you're going to save a video and it's going to want to add that watermark automatically. But there are a few things that you can do to ensure that you never have a CapCut watermark on any of your videos when you save them from CapCut. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a fake video that we want to do. We're going to use a green screen effect, so I'm just going to use this John Cena one right here gonna use that template I'm gonna add a random video that I have I'm gonna do that and we're gonna make sure that that template is there now that my video is uploaded to the template if we wanted to export it if I press on export you see that you have a few of these options pop up you have saved the device but with the CapCut watermark you can save and share it directly to TikTok and that is gonna happen without the CapCut watermark and you have a couple options underneath the first thing you want to check if you save it directly to your device, it is going to save with that CapCut watermark. You don't want that to happen. So we're going to ignore that. We don't want to use that right now. Next, you say you can see save and share to TikTok without the CapCut watermark. Now, if you press on this option, it's going to take you to TikTok. It's going to upload this video to TikTok, but it's not going to actually post the video to TikTok. So if you we do this, if we press on that, you see we open the TikTok app and it comes straight to where your video could be uploaded. So from here, if you don't wanna upload it to your TikTok page, you just press next, you press on drafts, and then now you can go back to CapCut. And then that is making sure that you can save the video without having that watermark. But if we go back and we do the same thing again, you see underneath that TikTok option, you see post on CapCut to remove the watermark. That is something that you really want to do. If you don't want to go through the process of uploading it to your TikTok page and saving it to your drafts, you can you check on this option. You can say post on CapCut to remove the watermark. That means it's going to post this video on CapCut itself. So if you want, you can post this content on CapCut and it's going to save to your phone without the CapCut watermark. And a lot of the time, if I'm doing something like this and I know I'm not going to want to post it on my TikTok page, this is something that I want to do. I want to use that option. Then I'm going to press on save to device with the CapCut watermark. I'm going to press on that option, but I know that because I have the post on CapCut to remove the watermark option selected, that if I press on that, it's going to save to my phone without the CapCut watermark. So if I press on that option, it is saved to my phone without the watermark, but it is posted on CapCut itself. So as you can see, this is on my actual photo album. You see, there's no watermark anywhere on the screen. I have the video right there. It will save to my device without that watermark. And those are two ways that you can actually save videos from CapCut to your phone without having that watermark to actually ruin the video. The next common mistake that a lot of people make is using copyrighted music. Now we all know by now if you created any type of video that music and sounds add to your video. They make your video that much better to look at. They make your video come to life a lot more. But when you're creating content within CapCut, you need to make sure you're not using copyrighted music. And a rule of thumb that I always follow when it comes to music, when it comes to sounds, I only add the sound after I've edited my video, after I've uploaded it to whatever platform I'm going to post on. So if I'm uploading something to TikTok from CapCut, I'm gonna make sure that I add the sound within CapCut. If I'm adding something to Instagram from CapCut, I'm gonna make sure I add the sound in Instagram. And the same with YouTube, Facebook, whatever platform you're posting on. Because nothing's worse than posting a great video and then having that video taken down because you used a sound that is copyrighted. Now there's a lot of crossover with certain sounds on a lot of platforms but you just wanna make sure, just add it once you've already uploaded it to the platform. If you have it ready in your drafts, add the sound from there, inside of TikTok, inside of Instagram, inside of YouTube, whatever. That way you're giving yourself the best possible chance of not having that video taken down strictly because of the sound that you choose to use. 
Now, if you don't feel like uploading the sound in whatever platform you're uploading it to, you can always check for royalty-free music. For example, YouTube has a massive audio library of royalty-free music that you can use for any of your videos. TikTok has the same thing. They have a library of music that you can use that is royalty-free for that platform. The only thing about the royalty-free music is that most of the time they aren't really trendy sounds, but that is gonna be some of the give and take that happens when you are creating content, and it depends on the type of content that you're creating for your audience. The next common mistake that people do is adding too many effects to their videos. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to add any type of effects to your content, but adding too many effects does take away from the actual video itself. Effects can just be a distraction for the audience if you're adding too many of them. So for example, this is a video that I created. It's short, it's 15 seconds long. There's no effects added to it other than a green screen effect. But let's say I wanted to add other effects. Let's scroll a little bit. Let's split this up into a few different sections real quick. Okay, add it, split it up into a few different sections. Let's play it first. You're seeing exactly how this video is without any of the sound, without any of the actual effects that I'm going to be adding. And you see there's really just, it's a simple video. You still get the overall theme of the video, you still get what the point of the video is. Now, if I come back, if I press on this first one, I want to add an effect, let's say a video effect. We're just going to add simple video effects this whole time. I add shake. So I add shake to that one, then add a different one to this, another video effect. We're just going to add random ones. And I'm going to do this for every single clip that I have that I split up within this video. Now that I've added effects to each one of these clips, let's see exactly how the video looks now. As you can see, the video, you don't really get the point of the video anymore. There's just too much going on now. It's basically all over the place. Yeah, adding a lot of effects is cool, but it doesn't look nearly as good as it, the original did. It's very tempting to add a lot of effects. And don't get me wrong, effects are cool. They do add to the video when you're adding them in the right spots, when you're adding them in the right timing, when you're adding them when they should be added. But don't just add effects just to add effects. So, like, like I said before, keeping it minimal does go a long way. So if anything, test out a lot of videos with very minimal effects. And if you feel effects need to be added later on, add them later on, but don't go into a video thinking I need to add all of these effects to have an effective video because that simply is not true. The next common mistake that people make on CapCut is exporting their videos in very low quality settings. When you're exporting your videos, you wanna export it in the highest quality possible. That way, when you're posting it on whatever platform, it's still a very high quality video. The quality looks good. It might not be this has nothing to do with how the actual video is itself. This has everything to do with how your viewer actually sees your video. Is it an HD or is it very low quality? And I'm gonna give you my recommendations about how to get these high quality settings every time you export a video. So again, we have a video right here ready to export. If you want to export a very high quality video, this is what you wanna do. Before you press on the export button, you see this 1080 right here. 1080 is a solid number. It's a decent quality, but it's not the best quality that you can get out of your videos. What you wanna do, you wanna slide that first slider all the way over to 4K. That's just gonna give you the highest quality that it, it can give you that CapCut can produce. Then you see frame rate right there. You can slide that all the way over to 60 as well if you want the smoothest video possible. So. The resolution is going to give you how it looks and the frame rate is going to give you how smooth that movement is in your actual video. A lot of the time you can keep it at 30, but I recommend moving it to 60, which gives you a much smoother playback for your videos. And those are the main things that you want to adjust when you want to have the best possible quality video when you're exporting it to your phone. So from here, all you would have to do is press on export and then the video is going to be saved to your phone in the highest possible quality settings. The last and final mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to CapCut is editing and exporting in the wrong aspect ratio. Now, what is aspect ratio? Basically, it's just how you're viewing your content. When you're looking at content on your phone in a vertical format, that is a nine by 16 aspect ratio. 
When you're looking at videos on YouTube and that's a horizontal orientation, that is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. A lot of content that you see on Instagram is either four by five or one to one aspect ratio. So the big thing to understand when it comes to having the correct aspect ratio is where is this video going to be posted? When you know exactly where this video is going to be posted, you know exactly how to edit in the correct aspect ratio. You don't want to edit a video in a nine by 16 format, but then you end up posting it on a 16 by nine format, which is going to add a lot of black bars on either side of the video when you upload it, or you're going to have to zoom in all the way in, which again, takes away from the overall quality of your video. So if you want to know what aspect ratio you need to be editing in TikTok. IG Reels and YouTube Shorts are all filmed in 9 by 16 format aspect ratio. Some Facebook and IG posts are going to be in a 4 by 5 aspect ratio. YouTube and a lot of Facebook videos are going to be filmed in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And your normal Instagram posts are going to be in a 1 by 1 aspect ratio. And you can easily change through all of these aspect ratios when you're editing within CapCut. And here's how you're going to be able to do that. When you're looking at you're a project that you have ready to edit what you want to do make sure nothing's highlighted you come to the bottom of the screen and you scroll until you see aspect ratio we press on aspect ratio and you see you have the different formats here you have a lot of different formats to choose from 9 by 16 1 by 1 16 by 9 4 by 3 3 by 4 you have a ton of different aspect ratios to choose from and whatever aspect ratio you choose that is what you're going to be editing in as you can see if i press instagram one to one though you see that it resized and you see if i do that 16 by 9 again it changed four by three whatever you select the video is going to fit within that and then you're gonna have to make adjustments from there to eliminate any black bars on either side of the video depending on what type of aspect ratio you want to actually edit in and there you have it five common mistakes that people make when using CapCut. now these mistakes are very easy to avoid but they're also very easy to make so always double check everything that you're doing when you're editing your videos is there going to be a watermark am i using copyrighted music do i have the right aspect ratio am i exporting it in the right settings am i using too many effects these are all things that you want to keep in mind with every single video that you're editing and these are basic things that are going to help you create the best possible video that you can and that goes for any video that you're making but other than that that's all i got for you if this was a video that you learned something from if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and if you have any questions comments concerns or if you feel like there's other mistakes that you've made let me know your biggest mistake that you're making leave that in the comments below and if you haven't done so already be sure to subscribe to the channel so you learn a lot more about cap cut about editing videos about cool edits that you can make about basically anything when it comes to content creation and that's really all i have for you today my name is steven I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. Peace.